Yeah, yeah my husband and I are living with my parents. <laughs> what is the reason for that? To see which marriage is stronger. <laughs> People always take it too far. And then there's like, show us your vagina. Yeah. <laughs> you were pretty good at letting me like live my life and like get drunk in the garden. She said to me when I went to university, you can come back pregnant or on drugs. Please just do not come back a born-again Christian. I've seen your dirty bits. Yeah. It's material. <laughs> my bits are clean, Skull. <laughs> Hello, Mensa. Skulk for side note here. Um, before I start this episode, just as per usual, thank you to our sponsors, Go Solo, which I'll talk about in a second, and House Wine. You'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have any House Wine here today because in a previous episode, I was drinking House Wine in the morning, and the brand said, um, Skulk, thank you very much. We appreciate it, but it looks bad for, for both looks bad for both of us. It looks like we're encouraging morning drinking, which they are definitely not, Mensa. I encourage it. Okay, so I just want to make a clear distinction between our wonderful sponsors who definitely don't encourage morning drinking and, and me. And then also, just out of respect for our guests who don't really drink, I didn't want to be the Satan of temptation this morning and present you with wine. So we're going to stick to coffee this morning, ladies and gentlemen. But that doesn't mean that I don't love you, House. Thank you very much. So, today we have comedian and a friend of mine, Kate Pinchuk. Hello. Hello. And then, Kate, your wonderful mom is here, Tani. <laughs> Tani who? <laughs> Sue Cooper. Tani Sue. Sue Cooper. Why do you have a different surname? Um, because I was raised by a strong, independent woman. <laughs> is that your maiden name? Yeah. It Pinchuk. is. Okay. It is. So Cooper's, yeah, Pinchuk's my dad's name. And oh, Pinchuk is your dad, yes. You had what? It was because you had already had your practice there. I had already qualified as a psychologist as Sue Cooper. Yeah. So I just kept that name. Well, my wife is also keeping her surname after the marriage. I'm assuming you are yeah. as well. Yeah. Are you doing it just because... Some performers change it legally, or yeah. a lot of them do the barrel. Oh my god! What is your what is the other surname? Uh, Haynes. So Pinchuk Haynes, Haynes could work. Pinchuk Haynes, Haynes. Yeah, Pinchuk Haynes. Quite cool. But sounds famous. It does, right? But my concern Kate is Pinchuk always Haynes. like. <laughs> like my concern this. is if you double barrel and then you have children who double barrel, then it's like disastrous. No. No. someone's going to choose at some point. And then if they get married, then they have to double barrel the double barrel. Exactly, and then Kate Pinchuk like... Haynes for Sochi. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't have as good a ring to it as Pinchuk Haynes. But did you, are you changing it legally to no. Haynes, but you're keeping Pinchuk for the stage? No, I'm, ke I'm keeping it Pinchuk. Even though I know I got my surname from a man, I still feel like, why would I change my name? Historically, because it's like, it's like this man owns me now. So I'm like, well, because Mr. and Mrs. Tyler Haynes, that's like, yeah. I'm not this man's property. So it feels like a bit gross to me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, M Mika, my wife, is the only daughter. She is four, three half sisters, but she's the only daughter from her um, mom and dad's marriage. And I get it that because if she changes the surname, her dad has absolutely the McKechnie surname exactly. completely dies. And for me, that's like quite sad, and I don't want to be responsible for that. But but that's not that sounds like this noble reason. But that's not the reason Mika's not changing it. Her exact words were like, "Just Mika Poseidon doesn't sound nice." <laughs> <laughs> she's right. very aesthetic, and I was like, "I mean, I don't think it sounds cock." And she's like, "Let's just listen, Mika Poseidon." And then she'll. But I'm like, "But you're saying a cock, so yeah. it's sounding." Mika Poseidon, Mika Poseidon, Mika McKechnie. I'm like, <laughs> well, okay, if you're going to say it, <laughs> eventually I'll just like, Mika McKechnie Well, people perfect. are going to call her Mika Poseidon note anyway. That's yeah, people happens. say Mrs. Poseidon notes. But then I went for a jog the other day with my friend and we were talking about it. And he's like, how do you feel about it? That she's not taking your surname. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I was a bit sad about it. I guess just like, I, I, I do like tradition. I really like tradition. Mm -hmm. Like it was very sad for me. Actually, in a way, when I came to UCT, that our res, 
didn't do anything to us. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted that because my dad had that because you know, when, when he was mm. at, at well mm. when it was still Rao UJ you know and you always hear these stories of like yo there was one night they woke us up in the middle of the night and yes. they tarred and feathered us and they beat us with tackies and at one on the one side I would have been very scared of that kind of stuff but on the other side you know it really builds a camaraderie in the race because you all go through this like tough Such couple of months. Such a boys res thing to say. The boys reses at Rhodes all did stuff like that. Yeah. Like they'd wake them up in the middle of the night, make them down like they would do bomb squad which would make them down like a giant thing of crackling and then like run down the road Yeah. until they all passed out. Like it was insane. <laughs> and we got woken up in the morning by guys in towels like just only wearing towels, singing like disgusting songs to us. And then we had to make them mm. coffee. And I got in trouble because I was like, here's the coffee. And someone was like, um, you need to make it for him. And I was like, I don't think I do because he just came and sang a disgusting song to me with a towel around his waist. He can make his own coffee. It was so gross. I know that's the thing with these things. Is, and that's why the, the universities one by yeah. one had to cancel them. It's because there's like fun and games. <laughs> And then people always take it too far. And then there's like, show us your vagina. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then it's like, it was so fun until why did you like go there? <laughs> and there was like, you have to... the talk we had before is like, girls, it's dangerous for you. So please protect yourself and be vigilant at all time. Okay. The boys are going to sing <laughs> to you now. And they're like, tits, tits, tits. <laughs> and we're like, wait, I'm getting mixed messages here. This is a little bit. I can see his boner through the towel. Please. <laughs> like, yeah. gonna, don't feel protected. I know that's, that's the unfortunate thing. It's like humans. Well, I'm doing a show at the moment where I'm a dog. How did you, in come, the show. How did you come to that? So I just like looked at Otis one day and I was like, you know, cause I mean, you would know as a comedian, like your whole mind gets absorbed by like material, 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 mm. I need material. And you look, keep looking at all aspects of your life. Like what can I turn into material? And then I looked at Otis one day and I was like, if he did stand up, <laughs> he's got so much material <laughs> that, that he can talk about that. I can never talk about because um, just like having his balls removed is like a thing he can do five minutes on. Like, I don't have balls and like, you know, my it wasn't even my choice. My dad just decided, okay, you're not going to have balls. And then yeah. went to the vet and then I just woke up with no balls. Um, I wanted to ask you, so speaking of the material on the way, the con, the way, yeah, I was thinking about Kate's earlier stuff. Now, Kate, you... I would definitely say that when you started comedy in terms of, I don't want to make the distinction male comics, female comics, right? but you know, people do make the distinction, yes. obviously like on a lineup, the audience make the distinction. Mm. So, um, I guess in terms of a lot of women in comedy, then at the time in South Africa, you were definitely doing a more alternative style because right. we were used to on Netflix, Amy Schumer talking about sex on stage. Yes. And American female comics, but I mean comedy was more it was more developed there. But it wasn't really a thing that I can remember in South Africa. It was almost still like that old school thing of, you know, men can talk about sex on stage and it's funny, yes. but when a woman does it, it's just like dirty and crass. One hundred percent. And I wanted to ask you, Sue, like those earlier gigs. How did you feel about about that? Was it like a bit cringe for you or was it hectic to you as a mother? It wasn't really because I suppose Kate growing up in a family with two psychologists as parents. Oh, your dad's also a psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have so many psychological problems. We'd been very open about everything and we'd always allowed you know, our children to Too open. express themselves. <laughs> and so I suppose, you know, the, I think we were more anxious about what she was going to say about us, quite okay. honestly, than what she was saying about sex. Mm. It was, you know, what have we done that is now going to be brought out into the open? And, and we would just be very embarrassed as parents. And it was always so obvious that we were the parents. 
Yeah, well, we I mean, look at, look yeah. we couldn't come in disguise. No, you could. You'd and have so to wear a wig. There was that element that I think was more what was anxiety provoking. So, <laughs> I think I felt more anxious talking about sex in front of you than you felt about hearing it. I mean, I, I, I'm projecting here, but I don't have kids. But I would think if I had a daughter, yeah. like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset that she's having sex but as a dad i'd be like yeah, <laughs> really yeah. Why? You, don't know. <laughs> you don't know she's like showing a million strangers how to give a hand job yeah on stage <laughs> because that was that's still one of my favorite jokes of yours the Game of Thrones handjob. Yeah. yeah, and like your arm um, getting tired <laughs> during a handjob. And I think all the guys in the audience are sitting there like, because there's always that moment. Um, sorry, this is like turn, turned into like a, a, a sexual well-being podcast. <laughs> but I think I think every, <laughs> I'm going to say this now. I think every guy at some stage in your life has been on the receiving end of a handjob. And you know, there's like, you there's like sympathy because it's like, I know she's not that she's in, not into, into that. it. Yeah. But and there's like part of you that's like, just do the right thing and say, listen, just let's just <laughs> take stop. a break. But <laughs> the, the selfish part in you is like, I'm just gonna ignore the yeah, the cramps that I can see. It's <laughs> like dying. No, well, that's why it felt so relatable because women and men would come out to me afterwards and be like, oh yeah, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. And you gave me that idea. Do you re- I don't know if you remember that. I do remember I, one day after a gig, I said, yeah. why didn't you add this? And then you did add it, but I don't remember what I said you must add. You said, do, because I was just talking about it. You were like, M- mime the hand job mm. for as long as possible. Until it stops being funny and then starts being funny again. Mm. And then that like made the joke amazing. Although when that joke died, it died hard. Yeah. There is nothing like total silence to you just fucking doing a hand Because for the people at home, she, she says she does it to the theme song of Game, Game of, of Thrones, Thrones yes. to get the rhythm. So it's like... Yeah. And um, I know it's a, it's like if you commit to something, oh. it works so beautifully when... But also I, at some stage, had a joke where I was a T-Rex. I go like into <laughs> oh a T-Rex. God. And then I'm like, literally go yeah little hands and i commit hard and like you have to <laughs> and then one day just silence and oh now you God, come out of like the t-rex mode and it's like yeah so that's kind of how i imagine t-rex too <laughs> <laughs> you guys love it <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible. Those jokes where you commit really hard. And I don't do a lot of like physical stuff. No, but when don't. I do, I like, yeah, you have to commit fully. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Mm. But if you commit fully and it doesn't work, then it's just like that death feels worse than other deaths, I feel like. Mm. you. My dad brought um Uncle Tony to see me do that joke at like the Cape Town Comedy. I don't uh, think your dad brought Uncle Tony... <laughs> To, to come see the hand job joke, he just brought him I mean, to he see knew, no, comedy. No, my dad had seen but he it. knew it was. He in knew your that's act. what I was gonna do. And then my uncle was like, "Great stuff. Would have loved a heads up about <laughs> the whole five minutes being about hand jobs. That would have been cool. But uh, good, good to see you doing your thing." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god, this is terrible." And then I did a whole. I mean, Trash Mouth is just a whole show of that. Yeah. Trash Mouth was just a whole show of all dirty bits, basically. And yeah, but it had much more of a story than the early years. Yeah. And so How was Trash Mouth? I never saw it, but I've seen your dirty bits. Yeah. <laughs> Material. <laughs> <laughs> My bits are clean, Skull. <laughs> yeah, that's on I've seen your dirty bits. Um Trash Mouth was a wonderful show. Really? Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Not something you would expect to hear from the mother. Well, 
But that's we that's felt great. it was an incredibly courageous show, and yeah. it made Kate vulnerable, but also just revealed her courage and honesty mm. and authenticity. <clears throat> and the storytelling was was wonderful. And so we really appreciated that. And, you know, there's not there's nothing that really shocks us. So I yeah, suppose yeah. having two psychologists as parents mm. was helpful because very hard to shock a therapist where you've heard everything. Yeah. For us, I think... At least she's joking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. People, well, well. well, I mean, she, she can laugh about it. Yes. The people in your sessions are just like... Oh, yes, yes, the serious, the serious revealing... I think what was difficult in the early years, the very early years, was we would be anxious about whether people would find this funny or not. Mm. Because well, just out of like, protection yes, for her. Yes, because it felt like such an excruciating thing to do. We couldn't it imagine is. being on stage and making yourself so vulnerable and maybe – you know, nobody's going to respond. And you watched me die a bunch. And so that was Even much me. harder. <laughs> that was, oh, yeah, that show. <laughs> that was much harder in the early years than what you're going to say, you know? Yeah. It was much more, are people going to laugh? Are you a big fan of therapy? I because love of, therapy. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I've been in Sue, therapy. Sue, Sue, yeah, Sue, Sue. I've been in therapy since I was like thirteen. I don't know. And well, I, I can think see that. from that yeah, picture oh that's God. like the, the face of a child who's in therapy. Oh yeah, that was when I dyed my hair black. <laughs> I didn't know you had a hair. Oh yeah, hair. I had in little, the middle I had of the hair. I had oh. hair. I had so many piercings. Not, but not you don't have the. Day. I don't see the holes anymore. It you healed. can kind of see this, but it's pretty much healed over because yeah. my lip covers it. What did you think of the piercing? Were you also like, it's fine? No, we weren't mad about the piercing. <laughs> really? Okay, good. I didn't know that. But we were very tolerant and, mm. you know, we allowed them. But I remember there were times where we kind of said, the know, pillow no, talk that's was... enough. Or, you know. No, you were pretty good with like giving me freedom to do what I wanted to do. And so I think as a result, I didn't go like too crazy. Mm -hmm. like, I did some things as a teenager that I'm never going to tell you because they would drive you insane. But you were pretty good at letting me, like, live my life mm. and, like, mm. get drunk in the garden. Yes, we you did. You were very tolerant. We did tolerate a lot. I, I suppose we really parented in a way that honoured their individuality. Mm. And then we ended up with, you know, two very individual children. Who live with you. So who happen to but end up still. But you don't live here. Still... I do live With your husband. Yeah. yeah, my husband and I are living with my parents. <laughs> what is the reason for that? <laughs> to see which marriage is stronger. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the end, who <laughs> say to your parents, take that. No, because Boom. he's going to the UK and I'm supposed to be going with him and we thought we would only be here for like two months. <laughs> yeah, it always happens <laughs> yeah, that yeah. way, and doesn't it? it's like 10 months later. Before you know it, <laughs> it's kind your of milk nice. is not your milk anymore. <laughs> yes, so communal <laughs> never living, bothered. returning to communal living. Yeah, I didn't think at 30 I would move back in with my parents. but With your husband. With my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's kind of nice. And until recently with your brother as well. Yeah, he's just left to travel he's the world. Okay. So the one I oh my God. You know, she said to me when I went to university, you can come back pregnant or on drugs. Please just do not come back a born again Christian. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. I don't think there was a danger of that ever wow. happening. <laughs> but thanks, I won't. When I was 14, my mom said to me, Kate, it's very important that you have sex before marriage. Do you understand? <laughs> you know, that's like the best advice you ever gave me. So I grew up in a Christian house. Well, I, I, st I still am Christian, but it's interesting that I didn't know that in non-Christian households, there was the same narrative, but the opposite. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no, all you, the things yes. that we were told, like, I didn't we know, it was, also the complete opposite. it was also, but opposite. Yeah. I would think a non-Christian mom would still be like, maybe just wait till marriage, just so you can... No, so Jewish moms are quite open. Well, but are, are you... Are you? It was as just, a psychologist that yeah, that was coming true. from. Mm. 
Otherwise, um, yeah. I, understanding I, I the nature of relationships and what makes relationships fail very often. Mm. Yeah, you so see it at all, I guess. came from that perspective, I think. Do you still teach now at the school? No, I don't. Are you full-time comedy? Technically, yes. My bank account says different. <laughs> <laughs> but you live for free, so you don't That's need to work true. as hard. You know, yeah. you don't need to do every gig for five hundred rand That's anymore. True. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm full time comedy acting writing. Yes. So that's what I'm I'm trying to put all my energy into that. Because when I was teaching, I thought I could do both. <clears throat> you can't focus on anything. What else. did you teach? English and drama. At a high school? Yeah. Okay. How um, are high school kids these days? Well, I taught it like... Because I think they a, all shit. No, I, I love them. Totally Teenagers shit. are so cool. I taught at a very progressive high school, so there's no uniforms. They call you by your first name. And so you have this like real relationship with them. It's this high school I went to for the last couple of years. What school is that? School, Cedar House. Cedar House. Wow, interesting. And okay. it's like very progressive. And the kids are like... treat You treat the kids like human beings, like at, kind of real people and they treat you like a real person and so your connection's very good and when you teach drama you also get to see like parts of the kids that you don't see in other subjects i think because there's like mm. a lot of emotional stuff going on mm. but i was just like blown away by how politically engaged teenagers are and how like hopeful they are and they want to like change the world look i didn't teach at like a private or girls school i think i would have like a very different experience Oh, sorry, guys. That's load shedding. What a great opportunity to speak about our wonderful sponsors, Go Solar. Go Solar, you know what I like about them? It's like we're talking now about accountability. They take full accountability for the fact that Eskom's not doing their job so they can put sun panels on your roof at no cost to you. You just pay. You don't pay that big, like hundreds of thousands for them to come put it on. You just pay a monthly hiring subscription fee to have free solar so you you pay but it's free does it make sense they can put it on for free and then you only pay a little bit monthly so that you can have all the benefits of being off the grid thank you go solar for not conforming to all this because basically a company of like go solar would not exist if they go yeah but how would escom feel <laughs> if we just went and put sun panels on everyone's roof. That wouldn't make them feel very nice because it would make them feel even more. If they see sun panels everywhere, solar panels everywhere, then they would feel like, oh, okay, we're not doing our job because you know, everyone's getting solar. No, they're like, screw Eskom, screw their feelings. We're going to put solar fucking everywhere. So go solar. They are awesome. Wow, beautiful. That's what a stunning sponsor you have. <laughs> I didn't know you could get that. Maybe Nor did I. So thank you for Maybe sharing you that. that so you basically pay like, like how you pay for DSTV. Okay. Every month. And you don't. They just put the panels on your roof for you. They 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 install it. So and then you just pay to use it basically. So it's like renting. Yeah. Solar panels. Yeah. But the reason that. a lot of people don't get solar is because it's expensive. If you, yeah, you don't have like. 300 grand yeah, to, to just set now it up. put down because mm -hmm. that's what it costs to, to buy solar and get everything. So, yeah, thank Maybe you, Go Solar. Because the inverter battery is not working anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I see you staring at yeah, it. Yeah, I'm staring. Like, at, I like really resent the inverter now because <laughs> it was like a huge joy that came into my life. <laughs> And now it just beeps incessantly <laughs> as soon as the power goes off. And you were right. You fought with that about getting a lithium iron battery and he said you didn't need one and who's laughing now no one because we have no power but you were right. laughing in the dark yeah you were right about the lithium battery also i'm really coming into my um i love rupaul's drag race and there was that one drag queen in the previous um season that's like i'm entering my bitch era i'm entering and i'm entering my sassy era and then at the end she's like i'm entering my angelic era and i'm like really coming into my um Yo, well, yeah, 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 like I'm really, I'm yeah. embracing it so much. Like I'm becoming, I'm at a point now where like, okay, 31 is not old, but to a kid, a small kid, oh, like, ancient. like I'm, whim, I'm at whim. Yeah. And now it's at a point where like little kids call me whim. And I know women are devastated when they're in the early thirties and a little kid calls them tunny. Oh, yeah. They're like, I'm not a tunny. But I'm like, yeah, I'm at whim. You should respect me. And I'm really 
just leaning into it. And I'm like, the kids today, and comedy has changed. You know, and I always used to laugh at the older comics. And For like, doing yeah, that, man, yeah. it's bloody industry. It's going to shit. I know. Now I'm one of them. It's so funny. So talk to me about um, being married, how that's changed your comedy. Not by much from what I've um, gathered. Well, yeah. I mean that in a positive way. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I like, well, I have a whole new set of things to talk about. Mm. Marriage is like a whole giant well of material constantly because you're mm. like with this person all the time but i i always check if it's okay if i say stuff like if i'm gonna tell everyone how tyler gave me herpes he needs to be okay with that you know what i mean once again considering feelings too much i would just it's your yeah, set. oh you do it and then it's apologize your later no <laughs> i i i ask for, for i will always take the risk if i love the joke I am so scared that if I check with a the person, they'll say no. They'll be like, I don't feel comfortable with that. Then I'm like, but you haven't seen it on stage now. Well, it does. Well, see, Tyler's thing sometimes <laughs> is like, I don't love the concept, but if it's really good, then you can keep it. So then I have to work on a joke for a while and then show him. And then he's like, it's not working that well. Take it out. Or like, no, that's killing. You can keep it. Okay. So he's pretty supportive. I'm pretty keen. Yeah, he's a good uh, comedy husband. Because he's not that interested in comedy. I think mm. it's like not a great thing to have a partner who's obsessed with the idea that you do comedy. Because it's not that cool. It's not very glamorous. And It's not glamorous. It's cool, though. Oh, yes, it is cool. It is cool. It's a cool thing. Yeah. But it's not as, it's not as glamorous as people think it is. Mm. And so it's cool to have someone who doesn't think it's glamorous. And yeah. it's like very realistic about what it is and supportive. And and like in the beginning, he would just watch and whatever. And now he like gives me extensive notes. Mika as well. She gives me notes. But I asked I ask for it. But it's it's because she, it's because that person in your life, um, they don't need to massage your ego. Yeah. Because they're already with you. They don't want to yeah. impress you. But, you know, they they already love you. So they're just like, and it's almost because they love you. That they're like, I'm not gonna just say what you want to hear. I'm gonna say yes. things to make you better. Yes. But that thing is sometimes to say like that joke's not it's not on the standard of your other yeah. jokes. Yeah, which is hard to hear. But mm. I'm like, this person does know me the best, so. I know and the I mistake we right. often make, and I I do it because I'm so like I seek the approval of the audience so much that it's not just always on stage that I'm seeking it, but afterwards if people come to take a picture and they don't say great show <laughs> sometimes this would be like can i take a picture yes but i want them to say great show can i take a picture right <laughs> and then they'll just take a picture and they'll be like thank you so much bye oh my God. and then you i'll know, be like so i still need to go back to therapy because it's like that thing like don't ask it is implied but then you have to but then you're like did you enjoy the show but it's never enough. That's the problem. Is you think it will be enough, but it's and never then, and then enough. Sometimes they go, "Yeah, no, it was, it was great." But I'm like, "You needed to do a cartwheel when you said it. You needed to, to really come show to me, me how great it was." Yes. No, Last it's... night after the show, this guy came to me. It was so weird. He's like, "How do you feel it went?" <gasps> Stranger. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "After I thought it went great. I really enjoyed." The show, the response was great. So, yeah, I feel it's been great. And I was like, I don't know what game he's trying to play, but I'm not yeah. going to feed into it. I'm not going to be, be like, um, I was just like, no, I felt it's been great. But because I, I did, I felt yeah. good when I came off stage. And I was like, so what did you think? And he goes, I thought it was okay. <laughs> I thought it was actually really good. I thought it was brilliant. What? It was art. I was like, wow, you really went through the whole. It started from like, okay. And then he thought a bit about more. That was really good. It was brilliant, actually. It was art. Oh, my God. (laughs) I was like, okay, cool. But uh, yeah, no, that's that's great. That it's with comedy, the pool of people that you that's eligible for you becomes 10% of what I think other jobs. Oh yeah. I don't want to call it normal jobs, but that other jobs, they can almost just like be with anyone. Some people. Yes. Like a teacher. It's like, you know, who's going to be, but with comedy, 
it really takes a special kind of person to understand yeah. what we do. Firstly, oh. you can't be with someone that's like you're never home. Yes. Even Not, with someone who yes. likes to be there alone time. Yeah. Like Tyler exactly. is so happy when he can watch a World War II documentary while I'm out at night. Mm. And that's good because you need to be okay with being Yeah, you, you can't have someone who's sitting at home like, where are you, where are you? Yeah. Because last night I ended the show and then what you don't people don't understand is that the, the adrenaline often... Yeah, it keeps you up. Is, it keeps you up. And then I was done by 10. And then I said to the stage manager, who's also a friend of mine, Laura, like, just, I really feel like a beer. She's like, I'll come mm. with you. Shame because she, she could see I was like, please don't. Send me home now. I don't want to go sit at home. <laughs> I really just want to still like be out. Yeah. And then we just went to um, Hussar Grill in Rondebosch, which was basically they were packing up and we're like, can we please sit? And while they were cleaning, we sat and had a beer yeah. or two. And I only got home at 12. But now mm. if I had a person that's like, your show ended, we were done by Yeah, 10. that's a huge problem. Now 12. And where were you? I was There's like having a beer be. with Laura. With Laura? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. It's got to be a lot of trust. A yeah. Lot of trust. And, and the thing is like someone like me and you could go on tour together. Right. And now we two people of the opposite sex. Um, And you've got a husband. I've got a wife. Yeah. But we are spending late nights together. Yes. And we will do a show and we stay up late after the show. Also like maybe there's drinks flowing. Yeah. Um, but we like sitting and dissecting comedy and talking about like, yeah. you know, like that joke. Oh, if you just like change that word and we like so passionate about it, but our partners wouldn't be the ones we have, wouldn't be sitting at home being like, what are they doing? But if you can't be with someone who's like sitting at home thinking like we're just staring deep into each yeah. other's eyes backstage. You know, so you can't be with someone jealous. You need to be with someone who well, also if you're a woman comic, most of your colleagues are men. Mm. So if you're gonna date a man, he has to be really secure that like you have quite close friendships with a lot of men and, and you're and spending thing, all your time with men. And at comics bars. are specifically we tight. Yes. So your male comic friends as a female comic are gonna hug you and yes. embrace you and it's not just like, it's not like a workplace environment, no. like in an office where it's like, hello, Kate. <laughs> yeah, look, exactly. You look lovely today. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, hi, and like kiss on the cheek, and yes. we haven't seen each other in so long, and how are you doing? And then if you kill, it's like, yeah. You yeah. Know? And it's like very, yeah, we have those relationships. It's like a real camaraderie. And mm. so like, you can't be threatened by that. Mm -mm. And also, yeah, you go on tour, you like sleep overnight with like some dudes somewhere. And your partner has to be really cool with that. Yeah. And yeah. I understand that. It does take, like, there are, I think, only, like, 10% of people that would be okay with that. And then also, the last thing is that you're speaking about your personal life yeah. on stage. And you can't have a partner that, like, is going to veto every... Yes. Like, there's some things, I understand, and Mika's also told me before, there's certain things where she's like, I'm just going to ask for this one. Like, please yeah. don't. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I t it's not like, an amazing joke anyway. But, um, or I've had a joke before about our sex life that she was just like, do it, but just my parents are coming tonight. Just don't do it tonight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> just not tonight. <laughs> um, but, yeah, but I mean, you can't have someone that's like, wants your life to be completely private because it's yes. like not, because I'm, talking to a, the public all the time you also about my personal life and someone, that includes you yeah you also kind of someone who wants to be in the spotlight all the time yeah someone who's cool with not being that person that is ideal yeah is i think good but, and who's not like afraid of it but who's just like not desperate to like go to all the things not competing and, with you yeah exactly so and quite psychologically mature in a way because of what you're saying, that, you know, there's, there's material being exposed and you um, on a trajectory yeah. with your career in such a public way. Yeah. But if there's someone who's competing with that, it would be impossible. Yeah. Because you need their support as well. Support mm. It's a hard yeah. job. Yeah. 
What's your favorite part about Kate's work as a comedian? That's an interesting question. I think that she's really doing what she loves and I think is really good at. Mm. And that is amazing because we always wanted her to be able to fulfill her dreams. Mm. And so I think the fact that she's able to use so many elements of who she is in one situation, um, it gives us great joy. And I think we're very proud of her. We enjoy seeing her being so funny. You know, we also <laughs> find her very funny. <laughs> and so... <laughs> To be able to have made a career of being funny just feels wonderful. I know. It's awesome. It's actually <laughs> so, so crazy to think yeah, in a way. You know, it's, what do you do? I'm, I'm funny. I'm just really I'm funny. I'm funny and people pay me to be yeah. funny. Yeah. That's and, you know, I, I think especially in the early years, we would go and we'd hear the same jokes, yeah. you know, again and again. And we would kill ourselves with laughing, <laughs> laughter, and we would just, you know, really enjoy seeing the development. So we've really loved seeing the development over the years. Yeah, because I was going to ask you because you've obviously seen the more gradual development. I was in Cape Town, got to know Kate, then I left for Joburg, so then I would only come back with huge chunks missing where I'm not seeing the gradual development. And I remember just this one gig, I don't even remember where it was, like a club gig, and I felt like the last time I saw Kate, she was like a junior comic. You know, she was like one of the newbies on the lineup. And then suddenly it's like been away for a while and I came back and then Kate arrived and then all the new comics were like, oh, Kate, Pin Kate Pincher. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, that's so cool. It was like you just suddenly... It wasn't overnight. It felt like overnight mm, to yeah. me, but you guys saw the more, oh, more she gradual thing. But very hard as yeah, well. Yes, and but it, <laughs> to me, it just seemed like overnight. Kate just went from like the newbie to like the she's now like the established comic on the lineup. And actually, the younger comics when she went on stage, I could see everyone was like, "Yo, I want to <laughs> see Kate set. You know what's she gonna what she gonna talk about?" And now I think so you were trying weird. some some new material, and they were like, "Oh, yeah." cool how she you know, like talking about marriage and you know it's such a weird feeling because because you're new for so long and you think of yourself as like on the bottom for so long it does feel like suddenly it, the power dynamic has shifted yeah and i'm like some yeah when i go on stage sometimes i see new comics come in to watch me and i'm like what is happening so yeah. your, your sense of self doesn't always catch up with you know where yeah. your career is. It takes a while to like get okay with that. And and what's your least favorite? About, well, not necessarily Kate doing comedy, so, but about comedy as I an mean, industry or what she does. I mean, this this is one of the least favorites is having to drive to these places in the middle of the night to perform, <laughs> which for an anxious Jewish mother is extremely challenging. Yeah. So that's one of my least favorites. They can, I have a tracking app. So Especially they in can South Africa. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be the case if you were in, in the no UK, way. but yeah. you're going there because you're taking the tube and it's relatively yeah. safe. I mean, there's still an element of danger, but in South yeah. Africa, it's like, cause you're also in a car. Yeah. You know, you're so vulnerable. I have a tracking app so they can track me. So I That's good. I yeah. don't enjoy that. And I think it's a I think it's a very brave career choice. And so sometimes, you know, the the emotional intensity of what it demands, you know, I can see is a lot at times. It's drawing on, you know, writing skills, acting skills, being funny, performing. Um, it's not an easy career. And so sometimes the stress of that. Yeah. And I, I don't want to like hammer on it too much, but like, especially for women, it's, it's very challenging and yeah. you are having to, I feel, prove yourself over and over again mm. Mm. where 
you know, I think men don't have to always. And I think the unfairness that in a way, I think it would be much easier as a male comedian getting certain kinds of work Mm. um, in certain kinds of setting. I think one has to work so much harder as a woman. And so I feel that that's so unfair in a way. But what I will say for you, Kate, is that, you know, obviously, and, and then, Obviously, men will jump on it. It's like, yo, but you just like complain all the time about life. <laughs> but you, but you, you never do. You, you, you never go like, oh, it's so tough as a woman in comedy. You just like put your head down and you just keep going on stage night after night. Mm-hmm. And like, obviously, you feel just, it's tough, but you, you just, yeah. Hoy. Look, in some way, I'm grateful because it's made me work so much harder. And really have to hone my craft. Yeah. And so in some I, way... I also wanted to say earlier, but I didn't know how to phrase it. It's, it's not a good thing, but through negative things in your life, you can always try and find yes. like... So it's still a negative thing, the unfairness yeah. of it. But I think if you use that negative, you've just used it well. Yeah, you right. Know? So it will obviously will be easy to just sit and be like, it's unfair the discrimination and like generally people don't think women are as funny as men and it's wrong with society. Yeah. But if you use it to be like every time you go on stage, screw you guys, I'm gonna yeah. prove you wrong. Yeah. It's like, very motivating. Yeah. To be like, I know what you're thinking when you see me and I'm gonna show you that you're wrong. And I've i I've seen you do that on stage. I've literally seen you go on and I can see and feel the audience. Like being apprehensive yeah. and the, 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 those first two punchlines kind of like, uh, uh, and then the third one like, ah. <laughs> what, was, what was that? <laughs> oh, what is this involuntary response that yeah. just came out of me? And then by the end, like by the time you say, thank you very much, my name's Kate. Like the, the And it's like really like you just watched like, like a battle going yeah. on. It was like them fighting you, you fighting them. And then like you end up being victorious and it's also just such a win at the end not just for you but just for comedy and you were just like i saw what you were thinking and i took that yeah threw it out the window and yeah and times that we've gigged together you know people afterwards they remember that and they're like and i've i've had um Messages in my DMs like, hey, Skog, um, I just forgot her name, but what was her surname, that oh, girl cool. that was performing on the gig? Because um, I just want to follow her because I just want to see. And can you see it in when you do solo shows? Do you, surely you can see like an, an increase in ticket sales yeah. as, the, as it progresses. Yeah. Because that's a good way always of measuring your success is Definitely. more people come to the shows. Yeah, de- especially after the later season of Tally came out, mm. that really helped. Doing TV stuff really helps. Yeah. Because then more people are seeing you and then they want to come see you live. And I've also just gotten, I've gotten someone to do my social media marketing, which has made a huge difference. Mm. And then it's so great to have, when you do a solo show, I feel like then everyone is really convinced. Then they're with you. If someone mm. has sat through an hour of you doing comedy, and they loved it, then they're like with you for life, mm. which is such a nice feeling. Yeah. It's amazing. It's exactly. like, oh, getting to do an hour is just like a dream. Yeah. So nice. And what's so lucky is when you start getting people that come to the show and then once you've been doing it for like five years, 10 years, whatever, and you start recognizing faces right? because the same people are coming Back and back and back. It's crazy. And people referencing jokes from, from you like, yeah, but that was two shows ago. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, yeah, we were there. And we came to the one after that and now we're here again. When's your next one? <sighs> next year, June at the back. Set. Cool, we'll be there as well. Oh my and It's gosh. like, it's crazy. What? I know. Because I've always hated the word fan. Like, yes. Like I've got yeah. fans. I've never, I never say in my life, like, thank you to my fans or my mm. fans. But then sometimes you meet someone and you're like, after that thing, it's like, that, that dude's like a proper fan. It's really weird. Mine. It's so I find cool. It really I, weird. I will never get used to someone being a fan. Mm. Like really, I mean, just the, the concept of like, I'm a fan of you. 
Well, Dave and I were fans of you years ago. (laughs) Yes, we came to many of your shows and loved that in Kate's very earliest years. So we definitely were established fans. Thank you. (laughs) You were. They love all the stuff you do. And now you are a fan of Kate. We are fans of Kate. (laughs) Thank you. We are. Yeah, I had this weird experience. I mean, to sit as a mother, to sit through Trash Mouth and be like, that was really I know. Great. And it's so filthy. I that mean, that was show great. is filthy. There was, I did Trash Mouth in Joburg and I got off stage and there's nowhere to go at the bioscope. So I was standing outside because I get really shy mm. and I know I must go outside and talk to people, but I get really shy about it. So I often hide. But I was in the front because there was like nowhere to go and this these people came up to me these like young people in their 20s and they were like oh my god we can't believe it's you it's so good you walked past me earlier and i was like oh, she smells so good and i was like oh i'm wearing knockoff Narcissa rodriguez and she was like that is so cool <laughs> and i was like oh my god especially when you oh it's okay also that will never happen with ghost solo just saying there's no beeping <laughs> no beeping in your life um <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever get to a level where I'm like, huh, no, whatever. For me, it's always such a big yeah. thing, such a big deal that someone's kind of like. I know. I also like often think of you when that happens to me because I like remember how you go around to everyone after shows and engage with everyone, give them your time because they're the reason you get to do what you do. And yeah. so I try to like emulate that as well. Yeah. And like really engage with people who came to the show. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Thank you so much. For your wonderful psychological insight into the world of comedy, women in comedy, and feelings. (laughs) It is something that I will hold near and dear (laughs) for the rest of my life. Kate, thank you. Thanks, Scott. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. I normally talk to the mom a bit more, but this is the thing with comics is once we start yeah. engaging it's just like yeah, we yeah it's, because we go through the same stuff yes so when comics are together we just like ah, someone who gets what we go through mm. yeah mm. well i think it's an amazingly courageous wonderful gift that you both have and share mm. thank and you bringing some lightness into the world is so needed so yeah. thank you for that so the and filth just bring also some filth into yeah. the world thank you guys thank you thank, thank you Go Solar thank you House we love you thank you for making this possible Your Mom with Skulk is a telltale media production and hosted by me Skulk Beside Note once again please hit the subscribe button on your podcast app that's it for today but I'll catch you next week for another chat with another Tani